Good morning, ECAC, and to those who are watching us online. Indeed, it is a great day to come together, no, even if virtually for some of us, to worship our God. 
So today, as we worship Him, I just want us to reflect on this question, no? How are we today? How is our relationship with God? Are we struggling? Is there sin? Is there fears, anxieties that we are facing right now? And have we really surrendered all of this to our God? So as we come to worship Him, I invite everyone to stand. And as we sing this song, may we really incorporate in our, in our lives that we are washed by the blood and there is cleansing, there is power in Christ. And as we surrender to Him, He will use us mightily to be a blessing in whatever circumstance we are in. Let us sing. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Yeah. 
Yes, indeed, there is power available to us in Christ. We are forgiven. We are set free. We can be changed from the inside out. And as we sing this last song, may this be the prayer of our hearts that we will surrender everything to Him, that we will allow God to use us, that God will break barriers, that God will overcome struggles in our lives, that God will restore relationships, that God will restore our hearts, our passion for Him as we yield our will to His. Let us sing from the inside out. Your glory goes beyond all faith. Yes, Father, you, your will above our wills, O oh God. We surrender, we lose ourselves in you. Your will.
struggles, all our challenges, we surrender it to you, God, for you alone can change us from the inside out, oh God, not just external changes, but really from our hearts, we long to please you, oh God, let's sing in my heart and my soul. Oh God, you chose to reach out to us in your grace and in your mercy. So Father, we humbly ask for your forgiveness, for your cleansing, that as we worship you today, as we listen to your word, we will be changed, we will be transformed. So that the people around us who need to know you, who need to hear about you, will know you through us that you will go before us and break barriers lord you will use us mightily for your glory and honor and may you bless your speaker today oh god as he will speak your word may it change us may it transform us oh god that you will be lifted high in this church in our families in our personal lives we bring all the praises and glory to you, O God. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning to everyone of us. We thank the Lord in spite of these trying times we go through. We can still worship together through online platforms such as Facebook and YouTube. Sana po. Okay po tayong lahat ngayon. Tayo po ay manalangin. Panginoon naming dakila, pinukpuri ka namin sa umagang ito sapagkat kami ay muling makapakinig ng iyong salita. Dalangin namin naway, buksan ninyo ang aming puso't isipan upang maintindihan namin ang iyong salitang nais ipahatid. Banal na Spiritu, kayo po ang mangusap sa bawat isa at naway gamitin ninyo po ang inyong alagad sa umagang ito. Ito po ang among, aming samot dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. I have a question for us this morning. Can we still vividly remember our first reaction or response when someone shared to us the gospel. How was it? Were you angry, disgust, sad, or happy? How about the moment when you encountered God and gave your life to Him? What were your feelings then? Was it mixed emotions, joyful, at peace, relaxed? Last Sunday's sermon, Pastor Edgar Manantan talked about the different kinds of people. Malala pa ba natin kung ano yun? So there were the ignorant, indignant, and interested people. Today, 
we will discover how God mightily used Paul and Barnabas in spreading the word of God in places in Asia Minor, and we will also know the different reactions and responses of people towards God's word and God's messenger. So before we will go to our text, let's take a look sa historical background nito. We will be touring some places in Asia Minor, and of this first missionary of Paul covers only two chapters in the book of Acts, but don't worry, we will finish on time or even before the time allotted. The journey happened during the Roman Empire around 47 to 48 AD, but some scholars would say that it started during 46 to 48 AD. So, depende na doon kung saan. Basta around sa date na po yan. So, I will be giving you a glimpse of the places we will be knowing today. So, if makikita ninyo sa screen, yan po, concentrated tayo ngayon sa Asia Minor. So, ito yung mga places na pinupuntahan or pinuntahan ni Paul and Barnabas. Last Sunday, um, Pastor Ed mentioned about Paphos. And this time, pupunta tayo sa mga places ng Pisidian Antioch. After, they went to Iconium, followed by Lystria and Derby. Then, they went back to Lystra, Iconium, Pisidian, Antioch, and bumalik na po sila sa Antioch and Syria. So, first place, titingnan natin kung ano yung first place na pinuntahan nila Paul. First place where Paul and Barnabas went was Pisidian, Antioch. So, accordingly, this is the most important city in Asia Minor. At that time, large settlement of Jews, madaming mga Jews na nakatira sa lugar na yan, and chief military and political center. So, yan po ang Pisidian Antioch. So, kung titingnan natin in verse 14, from Perga, they went on to Pisidian Antioch. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and sat down. 15. After the reading from the law of the prophets, the leaders of the synagogue sent word to them, saying, Brothers, if you have a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. So, ito yung sinabi sa kanila. So, Paul grabbed the opportunity to share God's word. So, ano yung message na sinare ni Paul sa kanila? First, Paul started with the history of Israel. From the Exodus journey, so, wilderness, kung paano sila nakapasok sa promised land, which took them 450 years. Imagine, no, ang tagal bago sila nakapasok sa promised land. Then followed by judges, some of the prophets, kings, and then in the New Testament, Paul emphasized John the Baptist who prepared the way for the coming of Savior, preaching repentance and baptism to all the people of Israel. Then Jesus was condemned, executed, but God raised him from the dead and journeyed with two people from Galilee to Jerusalem. So ito yung first na message na ibinigay ni Paul sa synagogue. Then next, Paul also shared about the prophecies of the coming Messiah. So kinote din niya na even in the Old Testament, na prophesy na ang coming Messiah. So le let's take a look at some verses. So in verse 33, sabi dito, You are my son, today I have become my father. Ang cross-reference niyan ay Psalm 2.7. In verse 34, God raised him from the dead so that he will never be subject to decay. As God has said, I will give you the holy and sure blessings promised to David. 
And ang cross-reference niyan ay sa Isaiah 55.3. Then in verse 35, so it is also stated somewhere, you will, let, you will not let your Holy One see decay. In Psalm 16.10. And lastly, ano yung message na ibinigay ni Paul during at that time is about the salvation and forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ. Makikita natin yan sa Acts 13, 38 to 41. In verse 38, sabi dito, Therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sin is proclaimed to you. So, it's because of Jesus Christ only that the forgiveness of sin is proclaimed to you. Not only that, it is also supported in verse 39 that through Him, everyone who believes, na natin yung word na believes, is justified for everything who could not be justified from the law of Moses. So, ito yung tatlong message na emphasize ni Paul during sa kanyang speaking engagement sa Pisidian um, Synagogue. So when the people heard the message, let's take also a look kung ano yung mga responses nila. So may iba't ibang responses sila. First, there are people who have this positive response. So in verse 43, sabi dito, many of the Jews, upon hearing the word of the Lord, upon hearing this um, message of salvation, Many of the Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas. And not only that, in verse 48, when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad, grabe natuwa sila, and honored the Lord, the word of the Lord, and all who were appointed for eternal life and be believed. Grabe yung naramdaman nila, sila ay natuwa, and then they honored the word of the Lord. Not only that, in verse 52, and sabi dito, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. So ito yung mga responses nila, grabe talaga, overwhelming. If may mga positive responses naman, meron naman ding mga negative responses. So in verse 45, sabi dito, when the Jews saw the crowd, ano yung naramdaman nila? They were filled with jealousy. Nagselo sila, grabe kayo ang ilahang na feel. They began, and because they have filled this jealousy in their hearts, they began to contradict what Paul was saying and heaped abuse on them. And not only that, in verse 50, it says that, but the Jewish leaders incited, eto, the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city. So, hindi lang nagtapos doon na they were filled with jealousy. Naghanap sila kung sino yung pwedeng um, makonspire nila. So, they stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from the region. But, main response din si Paul and si Barnabas sa kanila. Sabi dito sa verse 46, Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, we had to speak the word of God to you first, since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. And the result of this ministry in Pisidian Antioch to the people, yung result nito, the word of the Lord spread through the region. So dahil na, na expel na sila Paul and Barnabas sa Pisidian Antioch, Pupunta naman tayo sa next place na kanilang pinuntahan in which Iconium. So, ito ang second place na kanilang pinuntahan. So, ang description dito, ito ay 90 miles southeast of Antioch and it comes from the Greek word Icon, which means image. And in verse 1, as usual, they go to um, the Jewish synagogue. They spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Greeks believed. So may mga tao, when they spoke about the salvation, the word of the Lord, madaming mga tao ang naniwala. 
hindi lamang mga Jews, pati mga Greeks na din. In the same way, if may mga positive responses ng ang mga tao, may mga tao naman din hindi natutuwa sa mga nangyayari sa kanilang lugar. In verse 2, But the Jews who refused to believe stirred up the other Gentiles and poisoned their minds against their brothers. Ito yung ginawa nila. And not only that, there was, in verse 5, there was a plot of wood among both Gentiles and Jews together with their leaders to mistreat them and stone them. So gumawa sila ng paraan para mapigilan lamang ang paglaganap ng salita ng Panginoon sa lugar na ito. And in verse 3, So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there, speaking boldly for the Lord, who confirmed the message of His grace by enabling them to perform signs and wonders. Nung una, kung titingnan natin sa Pesidian, the word of the Lord spread throughout the whole region. Dito naman, the people of the city were divided some sided to the Jews, others with the apostles. So, kanina, Pisidian, ngayon, Iconium, let's go to the third place, which is Lystra. Makikita natin yan sa Acts 14, 8-20. So, accordingly, sa research ko, no synagogue in this place, and only few people or few Jews lived in this place. And it served as the mass market town of Lyconia. So, anong nangyari dito? In verse 9, makikita natin, or in verse 8, In Lystra, there sat a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Look, a Paul looked directly at him, so that he had faith to be healed, and called out, Stand up on your feet. At that, the moment jumped up and began to walk. So nagkaroon dito sa lugar na ito, nagkaroon ng miracle of healing. Nung nakita ng mga tao yung miracle, yung milagro na ginawa ng Panginoon sa lugar na yon, eto naman yung kanilang mga response. When the crowd saw that Paul had done, they shouted in Lyconian language, The gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called the Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief priest. And in verse 12, the priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, eto, Hindi lamang yung mga tao, yung mga crowd, kundi pati yung mga priest of Zeus, they brought bulls and wreaths to the city gates because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. So ito yung grabe talaga yung response ng mga tao. Pero anong sabi ni Paul sa kanila? So, in verse 14, But when Apostle Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We too are only human like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these wordless things to the living God, who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. Pero kahit anong paliwanag po nila, hindi pa rin nagpatinag yung mga tao. In verse 18, even these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. So, eto na naman. Nakita ng mga tao, oy, may ganap na naman dito, may nangyayari na naman. So, ano yung ginawa ng mga hindi, they don't, rep they refuse the message. Anong ginawa nila? In verse 19, then some Jews, imagine nyo ha, they came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. So ito yung nangyari, ito yung ministry, ito yung milagro na ginawa ng Panginoon sa buhay ng mga tao dito sa Lystra. So first, we went through Pesidian Antioch, 
Next, Iconium. And then, third place, Listra. Fourth place will be Derby. Konti lang po yung um, binigay. Isang verse lang po dito. And sabi dito, they preached the gospel in that city and won the large number of disciples. So, and pagkatapos noon, nung pinuntahan, derby na po yung last place na pinuntahan nila, bumalik sila ulit. Bumalik si Paul and si Barnabas sa Listra, Iconium, Pisidian, Antioch. Ano yung ginawa nila? Bakit sila bumalik doon? So, makikita natin sa verse Acts 14:21 to 25. Ang kanilang ginawa, um, they strengthened the disciples, they encouraged them to remain in their faith, and they appoint elders for them in each church. Sabi in verse 22, they strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to their faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders from them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. So ito yung ginawa nila, bumalik sila dahil they strengthen, they encourage, and they appoint elders. Then lastly, ito, um, bumalik sila sa Antioch in, uh, in Syria kung saan yung main church po nila. So in verse 27, they gathered, in Acts 14 pa rin, in verse 27, they gathered the church together and deported all that God had done through them and how He had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. Nagkaroon po sila, nung dumating po sila sa main church nila, nagkaroon po sila ng ministry report. So, as we have um, shared, na-share ko po sa inyo kanina, kung ano yung mga ginawa ni Lord sa places na yun, what attitude or insights can we learn from these experiences of Paul and Barnabas in the ministry, especially in sharing God's Word? What is the common scenarios here we see in the passage? But let us be reminded also that every one of us is a messenger, not only exclusive for pastors or for those individuals who graduated from the Bible school. Lahat tayo commanded ng Panginoon to share the gospel. What should be our heart in advancing missions? In sharing the word of the Lord. Ready na ba tayo? So we have five points here. Number one, we need to be ready. Ready for what? Ready saan at para anong tayo magiging ready. First, we need to be ready to be used by God in sharing God's word of hope and salvation. Ito yon. We see here that Paul and Barnabas boldly shared the good news of salvation to all the places they went. Sa kahit saan sila pumunta, sinare nila yung salita ng Panginoon. They did not miss a single opportunity of not sharing God's word to them. Different strategies were used by God in order to plant God's word in one's heart. Because they obeyed, God used and blessed them. Through Paul and Barnabas, many came to know the Lord and gave their lives to the Master. When was the last time we shared God's word to others? To our family members who do not know the Lord yet. You know, with the advancement of this technology, the sharing of the gospel is made easier for us. We can do it through call and text, chat and video calls and other means and ways available. So marami na talagang paraan ang ibinibigay ang Panginoon sa atin para po ma-share natin or maipahayag ang salita ng Panginoon. If we are not able to do it for a period of time, what might hinder us from not doing so? Perhaps this would be the right time for you and me to share God's word. They are just waiting, waiting for us, and they are ready and ripe for harvest. Next, why we need to be ready? We need to be ready 
to face trials and persecutions because of the gospel. We see in the passage that in every place Paul and Barnabas went, there were people who opposed them, not merely opposing them and the gospel of salvation, but went beyond into persecuting them to the point of stoning Paul to death. Bakit kaya ganun na lamang yung galit nila kay Paul, especially ang mga Jew people? Dahil nga, sa tingin nila, ang ginagawa ni Paul and Barnabas is a form of blasphemy against the Lord. So, titing, imagine ha, anong ginawa nila sa verse 19, nasabi ko na po ito kanina of chapter 14, some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium. Hindi natin alam kung sinundan, sinadya ba talaga nilang sinundan si Paul kung ano yung gagawin nila. Pero ito sila nang galing pa ito. Those people who reject the gospel, um, they came from Antioch and Iconium. And let's, let us be reminded that in sharing the gospel, there are people who will support and contradict you. May mga tao talaga na masaya sila dahil na mo sila ng gospel. May mga tao na ayaw din nila dahil may mga paniniwala sila. And even in the ministry, may mga tao din na minsan hindi tayo nasosoportahan sa ministry natin. And sometimes the saddest part is our family member who will not support us in the ministry. Ang inaakala natin na maging katuwang sa ministeryo ay siya pa ang nangunguna sa di pagsangayon sa ating ginagawa. But we will not lose heart. God is with us and we will in and he will enable us to do it for his glory and honor. My older sister who first came to know the Lord experienced persecution from the family and relatives. Pinalaya siya sa bahay, hindi na siya makauwi sa amin. Maging itinuring na siyang patay na, wala nang anak. At lahat kami galit sa kanya dahil nga nagiging or naging protestante na siya. But she continually showed her love and care towards us in spite of our attitude towards her. Where there, was, where there was an opportunity for her to share the gospel, she grabbed it. She prayed, fasted, and even laid her hands on me when I was asleep so that we too will come to know the Lord. She never gave up. Lo and behold, in God's perfect timing, the whole family came to know the Lord. So, ano yung first point? We need to be ready. Next, we need to be humble. Yan ang second point natin. When Paul and Barnabas heard what the people in Lystra were doing after the miracle of healing the layman, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We too are only human like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God. Zebrang, God forbid! Please, please, wag nyo to ang gawin sa amin. Tao lang din kami. Hindi kami ang dapat nyong sambahin, kundi yung Panginoon na aming sinishare sa inyo, siya yung sasambahin ninyo. When God mightily used us for His kingdom, we should never forget to acknowledge all glory belongs to the Lord. We always need to be reminded that we are just God's instrument, His mouthpiece. We need to remain humble and thankful to the Lord that He used us and entrusted His mission to us. May mga inentrust sa Lord, ginamit tayo ni Lord upang ang taong iyon ay makakilala sa Panginoon. Upang ma-share at maibagi natin kung gaano kabuti ang Panginoon sa buhay natin. But sometimes, people forget this. 
sa hayo na, ah, ako na good ni, hala ka maayo ni pastor, or hala ka maayo ni pastora, oy, or hala grabe, maayo na d'yo, kaayo siya nga leader bang. It can be tempting kay makabukad sa atay, but let us be watchful not to fall on Satan's trap. So first point, we need to be ready. Second, we need to be humble. And third, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. In spite of the persecution the disciple encountered, they were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Grabe no, grabe yung mga napagdaanan nila, pero meron pa rin silang saya sa kanilang buhay and they are also not only that but also they are filled with the Holy Spirit. In this trying time of our lives, our faith is tested even our ministry. Mahirap ang buhay, makikita natin na dahil tumataas ang kaso ng COVID, maraming simbahan ang nakasara. But we praise the Lord sa ibang mga opportunity kung paano tayo makashare ng gospel. Maraming nagluluksa dahil namatayan sila ng mahal sa buhay. Maraming nawala ng trabaho at ang ekonomiya natin ay bumabagsak na. But what a relief because we have Jesus in our lives in spite of what is going on around us and in our world today. We have this joy and peace that comes from the Lord. Yan talaga yung pwede nating panghahawakan. Yung joy and peace na nanggagaling sa Panginoon. Much more, we need to be always filled with the Holy Spirit. Hindi lang kay ibig sabihin na, Uy, naging Christian na ako, parang one-time feeling of the Holy Spirit. Every day, kailangan tayong maging filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to spend time with the Lord. So eto, mga kapatid, kumusta ang ating devotional time? Ang ating oras sa Panginoon. Ang ating pagbabasa ng Kanyang salita. Ang ating prayer time. Kumusta na ho? Fourth, we need to be empowered. Acts 14.21b-22 Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church. Sabi ko nga kanina, binalikan ni Paul and Barnabas ang mga disciples. Hindi niya lang sila basta iniwan na yung... Kung baga, oh, nakadungog or nakadawat naman good na sila sa pulong sa ginoo, bahala na sila sa ilang kinabuhi. Paul and Barnabas did not do it. Instead, they strengthened and encouraged the disciples and appointed elders in the church before they left them. What I like with our setup in our pastoral team today, with the leadership of Pastor Ramsa Lara, He says to it that we can still be a helping hand to our co-worker who needs our help though we have different ministries in the church. Also, Pastor Rapsal helps us develop our skills and talents like giving us the opportunity to preach something like this, allowing people to be more engaged in the ministry, equipping them, encouraging us when we are down, Checking on us if we're still okay, okay pa ba kami, buhay pa ba kami, um, are we still good personally and even in the ministry, and join us with us in our difficult times and struggles. Indeed, I am thankful to the Lord that I am part of this team. I am part of this church, ECAC. Mas nagiging magaan ang work, mas nagiging magaan ang trabaho, mas nagiging magaan ang ministry, dahil nandiyan ang team, nandiyan ang church, ready and willing to support you. Lastly, we need to be accountable. Ito yung panghuli, we need to be accountable. Acts 14.27, on arriving there, um, they gathered the church together and reported all that God has done through them and how He had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. 
So nung nakabalik na sila Paul and Barnabas sa Antioch sa main church nila, nagministry report sila kung ano ang ginawa ni Lord sa mga lugar na kanilang pinuntahan. Paano sila ginamit ng Panginoon upang malag- mapalaganap ang kanyang mga salita at kaligtasan. We too, we need also to be accountable to one another and to God above all on the ministry He has entrusted to us so that somehow we may know what had happened, ano na yung mga nangyayari, ano yung mga struggles and victories, and even how we can help all the more. In our church here in ECAC, every month or every now and then, during our pastoral team meeting or mga informal meeting ganyan, we give updates on our ministry and in every quarter, we give report to the church ministry team regarding our ministry, uh, regarding our different ministries. So nagbibigay kaming mga ganyan. Upang nang sa ganun, uh, malaman din nila kung ano na yung mga nangyayari sa church natin. So, upon knowing these insights, etong lima, what do you think God wants you to do today? This week or even this month? In which area of your life God wants to work with? Is it in the area of being ready to share the gospel? Yan ba yung gustong ipagawa ni Lord sa iyo to share the gospel? Or is it in the humility aspect na kailangan may part ng buhay natin na kailangan tayong i-humble ni Lord? Or do we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Perhaps lately, our relationship with the Lord is dry and para bang napalayo tayo sa Panginoon. Or is it in the area of empowering oneself? Alam nyo dati, parang if possible, I don't really want to stand or to speak in front of people. Mas okay na po ako sa small group setup kasi konti lang, dalawa, apat. But, yun hindi, um, pero an, yung gusto ni Lord is ma-empower din po tayo sa ibang mga bagay. Or in the area of accountability. Saan kaya dito ang gustong ipagawa ni Lord or gustong i-work out ni Lord sa buhay po natin this day, this week, and even this month. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we can hear once again your word. We can be in your presence, O Lord. I pray that whatever you want us to do, help us to obey it. Bless your words into our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Good morning at magandang umaga po sa ating lahat.
Once again, good morning to everyone doon po sa nanonood sa atin, sa ating live stream. Thank you for uh, joining us in our worship today. And like again to greet a happy birthday and a happy anniversary to our celebrants. May you continue to serve the Lord and may you continue to grow in Him as you journey in whatever task that He has entrusted to you. For our announcements, the month of October will be our Missions Emphasis Month with the theme, The Missions Continues Amidst Pandemic. So, we will be hearing a series of messages that has been provided by Kamakok to once more encourage us and at the same time to unify our hearts in doing missions amidst pandemic. I pray that we will all be a witness and at the same time we will all participate by joining us in our worship service during the month of October. Also, we will have our missions culmination at the last Sunday of the month, October 31. That will be 1 p.m. in, uh, in the afternoon uh, onwards, and we will probably be inviting someone to speak, and uh, we will feature some guests for the Q&A when we talk about missions. We will have the team missions ignite and uh, the very reason why we wanted to have this culmination is is because we wanted to rekindle to ignite our fire our participation in missions not only during the time of pandemic but it is our prayer that we will participate in mission specifically cross-cultural missions or going to foreign countries to reach out to our brothers and sisters. And then lastly, uh, due to some emergencies, we are canceling our physical gatherings, just like today. Uh, we did not have our physical gathering uh, because of some emergencies. So we will do this for two consecutive Sundays. Our next face-to-face -face worship will resume on October 10. Let me repeat that. Our next face-to-face -face worship will resume on October 10, 2021. If, um, if there will be uh, instructions from the city government, then that's the time that we will have to again uh, adjust because we want to uh, prioritize the safety of everyone. Anyway, we can still worship Him in our, home, in our homes together with our families. So let's continue to pray for one another and at the same time to continually remember our frontliners in, in our prayer time. And then continue to pray for the following, for Mom Portia, Mam Brillantes, Mam Fronda, Pastora Samoras, um, Mam Olaer. Uh, let's continue to pray for them, including uh, Sister Marilyn. Uh, let's pray for them, and for Mam Judith as well. Uh, continue to pray for for their families because these are our sick brethren, and so let's remember them in our prayers. Again, thank you for joining and may we be reminded that as we go and fulfill the task ahead of us, we should have this missionary heart that was mentioned to us by Pastora Annalyn. Shall we all pray for our closing prayer? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the message. We thank you because we know that you will use this to minister to us and to transform us, to change us. And so with that, we ask that you will fill us 
with your Holy Spirit so that we will be able to apply this for your glory and for your honor. Right now, Lord, we want to remember our heroes of today, our frontliners, O God, praying for them, that you will continue to empower them, that you will continue to shield them from the viruses, that you will protect their families from the risk, Lord God. Because as they serve you, they face this great threat. But Father, I pray that you will continue to give them the courage to face that threat. And that you will continue to empower them, Lord God, to be able to serve you without fear. Praying, Lord God, that you will boost their immune system. And at the same time, that you will protect them from the harm and danger. And that you will bless the work of their hands. Also, Lord God, we remember our sick brethren right now, wherever they are, praying for your healing touch to be upon them. Be with them right now. Touch the part of their bodies that are in pain. And in the name of Jesus, we pronounce healing to be upon each of them. Lord, we continually entrust to you as well our government. We continually pray for our president down to his cabinet members and the rest of our leaders. Praying, Lord God, that you will continue to be with them, that you will continue to minister to them. And Lord, whatever they are facing right now in, uh, in the level of the national concerns, praying, Lord, that you will give them wisdom, that you will unite them, O Lord, and that they will find a way to be able to solve the problem or to provide solutions, Lord God, to the possible problems that they're going to be facing and the problems that they are facing right now. Once more, we thank you for each one who journeyed with us, who joined us in this worship service, praying that you will continue to empower each one and that you will continue to use each one, Lord, to influence people, to be a blessing to the people, and that they will have that missionary heart, Lord God, that will continue to be seen in their lives, in what they do, and not just only in their words. So, Lord, we continually ask that you will continue to empower and that you will continue to minister to each one. And so this time, as we dismiss from this worship, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, but now and forever. Amen.